you are about about to enter 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 the strange strange world 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 of Mr. Mr. Davis. Davis. This story takes place about a month ago. I was working in the forest with a company on getting some of the trees taken down for a housing development to be built. I wasn't happy about it, mind you. It paid the bills, though. Nowadays, I'm working with someone in my town, but that's completely beside the point. Let me get back on track. Now, being a logger is a lot of hard work, and being that you're in the woods 90% of the time, you can come across some weird stuff. People have found old tents, tons of trash, jackets, shoes. Hell, a few years back, someone even found some remains. No joke. They still haven't been identified, though. It's pretty spooky stuff. Now, I'd been in the logging business for a few years and never come across anything of note. A few tents and such, but nothing like everyone was talking about. I was ready to see something. I did eventually get that wish. It was about 6 p.m., and we were getting ready to call it a day. It's too dangerous to work at night, so we got off a little earlier in the winter months. The guys who were there with me, which was only two, hung out in the truck, and I went off into the woods to take a piss. Sorry, but when you're out there, nature is your toilet. We did have porta potties, but who really wants to use one of those? I was working on getting the flow going, I'd been having some issues with that lately, when I heard a branch snap behind me. It was getting dark, and I was pretty much alone. I'd walked out a little farther than I should have, so I was getting a little uneasy. I tried to look behind me while still focusing on the pissing which had finally begun. I heard a second crack and then a chuckle. I knew then that it was just my co-workers. If you wanted to be embarrassed, you should have just asked. I then made a gesture of turning around and heard one of them call out, Ah, never mind. Just hurry up, it's freezing out here. I heard them walking back to the truck and soon they were out of earshot again. I zipped up and started heading back, but then... Snap. It was much farther away this time and behind me again. It was coming from the direction I was facing when I took a piss. Ha ha, very funny dickheads. Come on, let's get out of here. Nothing. No one laughed and nothing moved. Guys, seriously, I'll leave your asses here. Again, I didn't hear anything. I scoffed and turned around to leave. Alright then, I didn't want to keep your mama waiting anyway. As soon as I turned, I heard it again. Snap. I knew that'd get his attention, I thought. Turning around, I said, So, are you ready? I couldn't finish my sentence. Far off into the untouched forest was some kind of figure. It looked to be about my height, six feet, but its head was strangely bulbous. There seemed to be steam rolling off of its body. Given it was about 25 degrees out, this thing's body heat had to be off the charts. It was only covered in skin, no hair like I would have expected, especially in this temperature. What stopped me, though, what made me quite literally stop in my tracks, were its eyes. They were a deep red and had a glow to them. They weren't unlike when a dog's eyes catches the light, but I'd never seen anything like this. I could even hear it breathing. I'd say it was about 50 yards away, but the breaths were so labored and raspy, they were easily audible. It was almost like a growl. I finally regained my bearings and started to go back up towards the truck. I wasn't sure how far I'd come out, but it couldn't have been too far. At least, that's what I hoped. Soon, I was running, and to my absolute dismay, I could hear this thing pounding through the forest, mere yards behind me the entire time. I looked back, and it was running on all fours, despite it looking bipedal the first time I saw it. I began calling out to my friends, saying, There's something out here. Start the truck. Soon, I could see them in the distance. They either hadn't heard me or didn't believe me. It was the latter I soon found out. I hopped in the truck and urged them to hurry as there was something out there. They both just laughed and leisurely walked over to the truck. That was until my eyes went wide and the thing that had been chasing me started to crest the hill. It was now nearly wheezing and growling at the same time. 
Seeing that I wasn't messing with them, they ran to get in the truck and shut the doors just in time. The thing slammed against the side of the truck and fell back into the ground before screaming at us and running off. I wasted no time and floored it to get out of there. We were on the road soon after and were all freaking out. They apologized for not believing me, but I wasn't worried about that. I was more worried about going back out there the next day. We told our boss about what happened, and while he didn't believe us at first, he couldn't deny the large dent in the door of the truck. Either way, whether he believed us or not, we still had to go back the next day. I didn't want to. None of us who'd seen it wanted to, but we didn't have a choice. It was either that or get fired for not showing up. The day that followed was a quiet one. Everyone kind of kept it to themselves. It was pretty easy to do so. Most of the team was gone. We were just told to clean up a bit around the area. The day was uneventful until we started packing up the equipment in the truck. The growling came again from the south of us. We all perked up and looked over in that direction. We couldn't see it at first, which in a way was scarier, but soon the growling got louder. We all looked around until finally one of my coworkers spotted it. He pointed it out and the other coworker and myself jumped in the car. We urged him to get back in the truck, but instead he pulled a pistol from the glove box and fired four shots at the thing before getting back into the truck with us. From what we could tell, he hit it twice. Once in the leg and once in the chest. That's when he got in and we left. The following morning, since I was off, I called the wildlife preserve and let them know what we'd seen. I'm not sure how serious they took my claims, even when I told them my friend shot at it, but I really hoped they at least investigated. The following weeks were uneventful. We never saw it again. It either ran off into another part of the forest, or my friend actually killed it. Either way, I'm glad I've never had to deal with it again. I'm not even sure what it was. This takes place about a week ago. For some context, I was totally alone, and this takes place in Tennessee. A buddy of mine told me about a fishing hole he'd come across a few days before, and I decided to go check it out. He apparently had gotten a good turnout, so I figured I'd try my luck. I asked him to come with me, but his daughter was sick, so he was staying at home with her. I told him I understood, and headed out by myself. Following the mental directions I'd taken when he had told me where to go, I eventually made it. Even though I was pretty deep in the woods, I had a pretty good mental compass. I wasn't worried about getting lost. I don't know what made him think this was just another fishing hole. It was easily the size of a small lake. I rolled a log over to sit on and set up a new pole before getting started. It was a nice day out. Not really relevant to the story, I just remember it being so very well. Soon after sitting down, I was casting out and lighting up a cowboy killer. I was halfway hoping to catch something, and another half of me just wanted to get away for a little while. I was beginning to enjoy the time alone. I'd say about 20 minutes passed, and I'd caught three fish, one that managed to jump out of the bucket because I'd forgotten to put the top back on it. Not a spectacular day to say the least. I casted out my last piece of bait and decided if I didn't catch anything else, I'd throw the other two back. They weren't that big anyway. While I was on my last bit of bait, I heard something on the other side of the lake. It was similar to the sound a dog makes when it's drinking water after being in the heat for a long time. A really loud lapping sound. I focused on the other side of the bank and sure enough there was something over there drinking water on the other side. My eyesight isn't what it used to be, but I was fairly certain on what I was seeing. And I didn't like it. It was nothing like I'd ever seen. I'd say it was about the size of a deer and stood like one as well, with its head being low to reach the water, but then it did something I'd never seen a deer do. It dived into the water. Now, I'm not super well versed in the wildlife out here, so I thought it was nothing at first. It was a little weird, sure, but I thought it was just something I wasn't familiar with. Soon after it had disappeared under the water, I saw my cork go under. I went to grab the pole that I had wedged into the opening of the log I was sitting on, but about the time I did, my entire pole went to the lake. It happened so fast, there was no way I could have grabbed it. Totally dumbfounded, I looked out to the lake. 
I didn't think there was anything out here that could pull my pole down, but then I started thinking about what I'd seen on the other bank. That's when I grabbed my pocket knife. It wasn't a huge one, but it could do some damage. I started packing up and staying on my guard just in case. And then I heard it. There was a wet sloshing sound from behind me. When I built up the guts to turn around, I nearly fell on my ass. The thing I'd seen on the other side had come up out of the lake and was now right in front of me. I could barely process what I was seeing. It was covered in scales and had large webbed feet, but it was standing on all fours. Its face looked similar to that of a duck, and its eyes were small, black, and beady. Large gills covered its neck from, from what I could see. It had sharp teeth all over the inside of its mouth. The way it breathed in and out, and yes, it did. It was disgusting. The gills would open up and close as it inhaled and exhaled. It started coming over to me and hissed as it walked. I held the knife up as a way to keep my distance between us, but soon it was charging. I had no choice but to swing my knife, and by some miracle I connected with it. I hit it somewhere near the gills, and it cried out in pain before running off back into the lake. I left all my things there and decided to run back to my house. I wasn't sure if that thing was coming back or not, and I didn't want to take the chance. Once I got back home, I called my buddy and told him about what I'd seen. He told me that he's never seen anything like that and didn't believe me at first. I had expected that. I didn't want to believe it myself. The following day, though, we went back to that spot and the footprints, if you could call them that, that that thing left were still there. Since then, we haven't went back. I don't know what the hell is lurking in the lakes of Tennessee, but I feel like I was never meant to see it. I'm not sure when this story takes place. It was a good while ago. Maybe five years ago? Either way, all you really need to know is that my friend and I were walking through the woods near his house. We'd been out there for around 20 minutes when we came across two other guys. They seemed to be about our age, and we assumed that they were doing the same thing we were. Being the social butterflies we were, we stopped for a little small talk. The kids seemed a little nervous at first, but eventually opened up and told us about the hangout spot. It was a little vague, but we were bored and saw no harm in it. They seemed like pretty decent guys. Soon we were following them deeper into the woods. We kept conversation going the whole way. They asked if we smoked weed, which we did, and they claimed to have a plant out in the forest near a shack. I was really feeling good about this. I thought we'd find a new place to hang out, some new bodies to smoke with. I was wrong. A handful of minutes pass, and we're coming up on a dilapidated shack. It's not the prettiest thing, you know. Yeah, he was right, too. It looked like if you farted on it, it would fall over. Just follow us inside. We've got some uh, cool stuff in there. I was just about to walk right in behind them when my friend grabbed my arm. When I turned around, he pointed over a large rock on the other side of the shack. When I looked over, I saw a foot slide behind. Something was fishy about this. Uh, we gotta go. I, I didn't realize what time it was. Just as we started backing away, an older man came from behind the rock screaming at us. We turned and booked it back the way we came. I don't think any of them ever gave chase, but we didn't stop to find out. We made it back to my friend's house and told his parents about what happened, which prompted them to call the police. They came out soon after, and they walked with us back to the spot where we'd seen the group. Once we showed up, there wasn't anyone there. And the police searched inside of the building and around it. And they didn't find much, but what they did find was a bit disconcerting. A hammer, a little baggie of pills, and a ton of used syringes. I don't know what kind of fucked up things that group had planned for us out there, but I'm glad we didn't get a chance to find out. 